The state of Texas is seeing a rise in hate crimes. A Bear County jailer is suspected of smuggling tobacco to inmates. In less than a week away from 2020, we're giving you a preview of what to expect from the business world in the new year. Thanks for joining us right here. KSAT News at 9, streaming right here from the KSAT 12 Newsroom. I'm Daphne Gray, filling in for Myra Arthur. Tonight, we begin here. Hate crimes are on the rise here in Texas. Data from the FBI shows a near, nearly 240% increase from 2017 to 2018. Last year, there were 457 reported compared to just 192 the year before. Tiffany Huertas takes a look closer at the numbers and breaks down how these crimes are categorized. On Christmas Eve last year, a Northwest San Antonio church was vandalized. Pentagrams, other satanic symbols and profanity were found tagged on the Fellowship Bible Church. This is just one of several hate crimes reported in our community. But what exactly is a hate crime? A hate crime is defined as a criminal offense against a person or property that is motivated by race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, and disability. Hate crimes became punishable in 1968 after Congress passed a statute that was then signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson. That law makes it a crime to threaten or to use force against any person because of race, color, religion, or national origin. Since then, the law has been strengthened. In 1996, destroying religious property based on bias became criminal. In Texas, racially motivated hate crimes saw the most dramatic increase. These cases alone spiked from 117 in 2017 to 314 in 2018. In Texas, incidents involving religion, sexual orientation, and disability also rose. Here at home, there were six hate crimes reported in 2018. That's compared to four the year before. Records obtained by KSAT.com show three of those crimes were based on race, ethnicity, ancestry. Two were based on religion, and one was based on sexual orientation. For the Nine, Tiffany Huertas. As we've previously reported, the Southern Poverty Law Center says that there are more than 1,000 active hate groups in the United States, with 73 in Texas and at least four based here in San Antonio. Questioning over contraband smuggling at the Bear County Jail leads to the resignation of a deputy, Milton Martinez was uh, submitted his resignation on Monday after investigators confronted him. The sheriff's office says that it was suspected that Martinez had smuggled tobacco to inmates. He had been working as a jailer. Martinez had worked with BCSO since January of last year. A pregnant woman a pregnant woman killed on Christmas Day, a popular ESPN reporter dead at 34 after contracting pneumonia and a car gets stuck on a narrow passenger bridge in New York City. All of it caught on camera. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. A family shattered on Christmas. Police say Gabriela Rodriguez, a 24-year-old pregnant mother, was shot and killed by the father of her two boys when she dropped them off for the holiday. Rodriguez's mother says both boys were there when it happened, and the oldest saw everything but doesn't necessarily understand what happened. He believes his mommy's coming home and his daddy's going to behave and come home and everybody's going to be friends again. A Texas teen killed after crashing his car into a house. This happened about 20 miles east of the woodlands. DPS troopers say the 19-year-old ran a stop sign, went airborne, and hit a tree before crashing into the home. Speed and alcohol are believed to have played a role. Journalists and sports fans are mourning the death of ESPN reporter Ed Ashoff. The 34-year-old died on Christmas Eve after revealing that he contracted pneumonia. Doctors say that the death of Ashoff at such a young age is a reminder of how dangerous pneumonia can be. Pneumonia kills upwards of 50,000 adults in this country every year, and this is a tragic example. A 30-year-old woman involved in a car crash over the weekend is now behind bars. The Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested Natalie Saldana this afternoon on a charge of intoxication manslaughter. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, on Sunday, deputies received a call to help a driver stranded with his family on I-10 near Leon Springs. Sheriff Javier Salazar says that while waiting for the car to be towed, Saldana slammed into the deputy's vehicle from behind while going 90 miles an hour. The patrol car flew into the tow truck and then landed on the man and his wife. The man died as a result of his injuries. A car gets stuck in a narrow pedestrian lane in New York City. It was on a bridge that connects Brooklyn to Queens. 
The driver was gone by the time police got there. They likely left through the window since there wasn't enough space to open the doors. Officers are still looking for that driver. An inmate escape prevented at the Bear County Jail this morning. Marco Alvarez was in jail on charges including assault causing bodily injury. Deputies say Alvarez was being relocated when he made his way to the booking area with falsified release documents. He's now charged with forgery of a government instrument. At least two people hurt in Switzerland after an avalanche hit a ski resort in the Alps. The avalanche was caught on camera. Six people were rescued or were able to free themselves from the snow. A strip club is doing its part to help the homeless this holiday season. Las Vegas-based Deja Vu says they spent around $50,000 to provide tents for homeless people in different cities across the country. And while their act of kindness has drawn praise, it has also drawn criticism from parents because the club's logo is on the tents. Some say they don't want their children to be exposed to that. A North Carolina couple mistakes a vacuum for a home intruder. They were in their bedroom when they heard a clatter coming from downstairs. They were so afraid they hid in the closet and called 911. When deputies arrived, they were quickly able to identify the culprit. They asked me how long I had it, and I said about two days, and they all just started laughing because they knew it was just uh, one of those things. Somehow, the vacuum turned itself on in the middle of the night. To read more about these nine stories, head to ksat.com slash news at nine. Heading over to weather with my girl Katie Blake. Of Hello. course, a bit cloudy today. The temperature, yeah. I like the temperature though. It's pretty it, cool. It was comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we stayed in the 60s all day. Morning low was 60 degrees. We made it up to 68 this afternoon because of the clouds. That didn't allow for us to warm up very much. But yeah, it was comfortable out there. You may have noticed a little bit more uh, humidity today. Felt a bit more humid out there. Temperature today, high temperature 68, just a few degrees above our average this time of year. We're staying well away from our records, which is good. Those are in the low 80s uh, as we get into December here in South Texas. Satellite and radar, so a lot of cloud cover out there. Uh, no rain, though, coming out of these clouds. That green you're seeing there up closer to Bulverde uh, and New Braunfels, that's just some radar ground clutter. We haven't had any rain today. There is some rain uh, over southern Louisiana there and also well off on the west coast. But look at this cloud cover that has just been streaming in all day long. It covers a good portion of Texas from us here in South Texas along the Rio Grande all the way up to DFW and the Red River. So a lot of clouds out there. The skies will stay cloudy tonight. Taking you over though to the West Coast really quickly. Look at this nice counterclockwise swirl in the atmosphere. Cloud cover precip here as well. We've got rain and even snow in the higher elevations of Southern California there that stretches back toward Las Vegas off into Phoenix and Arizona counterclockwise swirl indicating an upper level low pressure system in the atmosphere that is going to be heading toward Texas over the next day and a half or so a wide view here takes us to this time 24 hours from now Friday at 9 p.m. that upper level low pressure system getting closer to us uh, this is going to drop a cold front that you'll be able to see swing across Texas Friday night and during the day Saturday you can pick it out by the rain, the precip that this forecast model is showing. This frontal boundary will be moving through Texas really for most of us during the day on Saturday. A lot more rain and even some stronger storms expected up in central and north Texas. So we're talking College Station up to DFW and then up into the Plains. We're going to be on the tail end of things here, so we're not concerned about any strong to severe thunderstorms, but we do have a chance of some showers in the forecast, and I'll walk you through that right now. So through tomorrow morning, skies stay cloudy. We're looking at patchy fog and some drizzle developing through early on your Friday. Into Friday afternoon, Friday 5 p.m., a few isolated showers will begin to develop, and we'll hold on to a chance for more drizzle and isolated rain showers Friday night through early Saturday morning. So here's Saturday. 8 a.m. We've got some showers out there. That's ahead of the front that will be moving through San Antonio late Saturday afternoon, early Saturday evening, Saturday 3 p.m. Still a few more showers hanging around. Once that front moves through Saturday evening, things will start to clear out. Our rain chances will drop and we're actually going to clear out really nicely for Sunday. We'll talk more about that in New Year's Eve coming up in just a couple of minutes. Here's how your Friday looks though. Great to start. A little bit of clearing in the afternoon, a high temperature around 70, and we'll kick in that 20% chance of rain beginning in the afternoon with the rain chances continuing into Saturday. And the next big thing now that we've gotten past Christmas, Daphne, is the New Year's Eve forecast. Yeah. That is still a little up in the air. We have an idea of what things will look like, so we'll talk about that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Katie. You know I like the drizzle, though, so. Yeah. I'm not it's a cozy. It's cozy. <laughs> All right, Katie, thank you. <laughs>
The year is almost over in between big manufacturing announcements and news about major redevelopments around town. 2019 was a big year for the local business community. This week's KSAT News at 9 anchor Myra Arthur chatted with San Antonio Express News editor and columnist Greg Jefferson about what to expect in 2020. Throughout the show, we'll feature snippets of that conversation. From job growth to the future of manufacturing in the Alamo City to a look at what to expect from the housing market. San Antonio Express News business editor and columnist Greg Jefferson Thanks for is me. here for another business briefing. So mm -hmm. instead of looking back at 2019, we're going to look ahead we'll to 2020. We'll take what we know about 2019 <laughs> and we'll look forward. That's right. That right? Yes, okay. we are looking forward. So let's talk about job growth. Does that look promising for it does. Area? Well, yes, it does. Okay. Um, so we're ending or as we kind of head to the end of the year. Uh, our job growth rate is about 2.8%, which does not sound great, but it is actually higher than the state average and better than last year. So, you know, we had a strong, a strong year for employers creating new jobs and companies moving into San Antonio and bringing jobs with them. So that's, that's encouraging. And I, you know, there's really nothing uh, on the horizon other than this you know, ter tariff war <laughs> in a very yes. uncertain presidential election. Apart from that, uh, things seem to be pretty steady. I mean, there's no reason to think uh, we're headed for a, a depression or a really deep recession. So, okay. uh, you know, at this point, I think it's, it's pretty safe to say, you know, at least in the next few months going into early 2020, we'll see probably the same pace of, of job growth. And uh, that kind of feeds into the housing market, which has been pretty strong. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, same thing. There's no reason to think uh, we'll be backsliding much. Okay. In terms of job growth, is there any indication, perhaps, what industries in San Antonio may see the biggest growth? Yeah. I mean, so this year in 2019, the the top three for uh, adding jobs was hospitality and leisure, construction, and manufacturing. Hospitality and leisure and construction led um, by far, uh, you know, they, they beat every other jobs category handily. Uh, unfortunately, those are some of the lower paying jobs. Uh, you still want them because, I mean, obviously, if, if you know, if, if employers are bringing and adding jobs like those here, there's a demand for them and there are people to fill it, to fill those jobs. Uh, but the money's not hot. Manufacturing, on the other hand, that's encouraging because that does pay more than the average salary or average wage in San Antonio. And it seems to be picking up ahead of steam. It's funny, I mean, manufacturing is not something you think of as kind of a growth industry. Uh, and you know, nationally, that really is the case. I mean, it's not particularly a, a strong growth sector, but in San Antonio, it, it is, at least, it's you know, now, us. yeah, it's working yeah. for us now. I mean, in 2019, you know, you had Toyota announcing that it's investing more than $300 million in its Southside truck plant. You have Navistar, you know, they're going to be bringing 500 jobs uh, to a new plant on the South Side. And, you know, it's going to be right next to the uh, Toyota plant. And those numbers don't really factor in this year at all. I mean, none of those jobs exist yet. You also have a Toyota supplier, Ison. Uh, that's going to be opening uh, oh, in Cibolo. Uh, 900, it's going to be a 900 uh, employee factory to supply uh, the Toyota plant and many others in the region. Uh, these are, you know, these are, these are stellar numbers. I mean, that's great news. And it's, it's happening just in a part of the economy that San Antonio has never really uh, excelled in. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, my name is Specialist Benjamin Wright. And Specialist Shaston Henson. And we'd like to give a shout out to our hometown of San Antonio, Texas, all the way from Camp Zama, Japan. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays.
The number of migrant children in Texas shelters dropped dramatically this year. A Texas Tribune analysis found that the number has fallen to its lowest point in two years. As of November 20th, the state's 35 licensed shelters were only at 23% capacity. Those shelters have permission to house up to 5,800 children, but there are only about 1,300 currently living in them. This drop comes after the record high numbers in 2018. In December of 2018, the shelter's population peaked to 8,500 children. Since then, three shelters have closed. In terms of Toyota and Navistar, those two big announcements, why do you mm -hmm. think that San Antonio is seeing growth in those well, kinds of manufacturing jobs? I mean, I think there, there, there are several things at work. Uh, it, most of the uh, new jobs in manufacturing, in one way or another, kind of play into Toyota's decision in 2003 to build its next Tundra plant in San Antonio. Uh, in retrospect, I mean, when you look at that decision, it was a real leap of faith. I mean, uh, this was a, basically a billion dollar investment that Toyota was going to make in San Antonio. And it wasn't a proven uh, auto manufacturing center. Uh, there were serious questions about whether we would have uh, the workforce to actually fill those positions. And that, that's been a challenge for Toyota. Uh, but what's, uh, what's followed from that is uh, you know, you've got Toyota and 20 plus suppliers moving in. Uh, they're churning out uh, a lot of product and a lot of trained workers. Uh, so when they move on from Toyota or from any of the suppliers, they're available for a pool. And you've got local government, universities, and our uh, community college system involved in training kind of next generation workers for Toyota, for the suppliers. So they're creating uh, kind of a workforce, I think, that Navistar and other manufacturers are going to want to tap into. Okay. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. I mean, yeah. you know, it's still, you know, you still have to consider San Antonio's workforce. You, you know, their you know, San Antonio skill workers skill level not quite up to par, not where they need to be, but they're getting there. So with Toyota's announcement that they made about, mm -hmm. made this year about what's to come, that was really just an investment in the facility that already that's exists. Right. Yeah, and the, we don't know, right, how many jobs exactly. that's bringing. Or whether it will bring, you know, whether it will bring any jobs. But okay. you have to assume that with, a, you know, with an investment of that size, it at least raises the chance that Toyota will bring some other uh, model to that plant to produce. So you've, right now it makes uh, mid-sized Tacomas and full-sized Tundras. The question is, will they bring, you know, are they gonna be, gonna be bringing a third model to that plant? And if they do, it seems likely that they're gonna be adding workers okay. to accommodate that. And Navistar, for those people not familiar yeah, with they that, do, that's more commercial trucking. Yeah, yeah they, they do, uh, actually they do uh, heavy duty trucks, uh, some military vehicles oh, and school okay. buses. But th okay. yeah, here they're gonna be making commercial kind of heavy trucks. They're gonna break ground early next year and the facility will be operational and believe it is uh, 2021. Ah, oh, okay, so we got some time on that. Yeah, yeah, got plenty of time. Turning to tonight's top stories, a new study finds getting the recommended amount of physical activity could be tied to lower risks of certain cancers. The study analyzed data from more than 750,000 adults in the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Looking at 15 types of cancer, it found that the recommended amount of physical activity correlated with lower risks of seven types of cancers. They are colon, breast, kidney, myeloma, liver, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and endometrial cancer. U.S. health officials recommended adults get at least two and a half hours of moderate intensity aerobic exercise and 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic exercise per week. Amazon says it had its best holiday season ever this year, although it didn't release specific figures. The e-commerce giant said its top sellers this holiday season included the Echo Dot, Fire TV Stick, and Echo Show 5. The Alexa-enabled devices have been huge hits for Amazon in the past several years and have helped the company capture the largest share of the voice assistant market. Now, that's a great place to enjoy being outside and getting some fresh air. But do you know the story behind Tom Slick Park on San Antonio's west side? RJ Marquez explains the park is named after the man behind a major research institute. It's tonight's Throwback Thursday. 
Tom Slick Jr. founded Southwest Research Institute 72 years ago. The amazing things that they do is just incredible. And how much they've grown over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Southwest Research Institute provides innovative science, tech, and engineering services to clients around the world. The nonprofit now employs 2,600 people. Slick Spirit lives on in the institute he founded, but it also lives on here at Tom Slick Park off of Highway 151. Great location, great dog park, playgrounds, just tons of things for people to do. Southwest Research donated the land for the park to the city. San Antonio's Parks and Rec Department has made sure to incorporate Slick's sense of adventure. Tom Slick himself was just a different kind of guy. He uh, just felt very strongly that there was other things out there. Um, I think he believed in aliens. If you've ever been to the park, maybe you've seen this. It's the Loch Ness Monster peeking out of the pond. There's a reason the city placed the mythical creature right here. I know he believed in the Loch Ness Monster. Another feature you may have noticed on the playground, these giant prints, supposedly left behind by the abominable snowman. He also thought of the abominable snowman, Yeti, those kind of things, and he would actually go, and he had the means to be able to go and look for them. So he would go to the Himalayas, he would go to Scotland and go to the locks, and he would look for these things. More tributes to Slick's fascination with the unexplainable will be added to the park in the future. In the meantime, the city says the park is just a great place to enjoy the outdoors. Open spaces are incredibly uh, valuable and it makes the quality of life better. You can have a picnic, you can play ball, you can do so much for free at no cost. And a lot of times people just want to go and explore. You know, who knows what else is out there. For The Nine, RJ Marquez. A throwback Thursday is just one of the series we feature right here on the News at 9. Here's a look at some of the others. Be sure to tune in to the News at 9 tomorrow night for a look back at the week's biggest stories in the week in 210. The artist behind an iconic local sculpture died this week at the age of 76. Bob Daddio Wade, the man who created the giant cowboy boots at the North Star Mall, died of heart failure, according to multiple media reports. Wade's famous boots have been a local attraction for 40 years. They even appeared in the Guinness World Records 2016 book for World's Tallest Cowboy Boots Sculpture. You can read more about Wade and the boots right now on KSAT.com. Welcome back and thanks so much for joining us for KSAT's News at 9. All right, Christmas out of the way and now we're in that weird time where time stands still between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Nobody really knows what's going on. You're off of work, then you're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel your pain. Well, now we've got to look forward to the New Year's Eve forecast. Of course, there's always a ton going on New Year's Eve, whether you're staying in, going out forecast is definitely important. And as it gets closer, we're starting to be able to hone in on uh, what these days are going to look like Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. It does look like after clearing out Sunday and Monday, we'll bring some clouds back into the forecast. Also a low inch chance of rain by New Year's Eve and then that chance of rain will carry over into Wednesday. 40% chance of some scattered showers as our next weather maker moves on in. So we talked about the low pressure system that's on the West Coast right now that will bring a cold front through on Saturday. So that's done. We clear out by Sunday and Monday. Here's Monday at 9 p.m. We've got another low pressure system off to our West that will be approaching, bringing back cloud cover and also chances of rain. Now a couple of our forecast models are having a bit of a hard time coming to an agreement on exactly when this upper level low starts to approach. So that has effects on when we'll see the big increase in cloud cover and also when we could see rain chances. Hopefully our forecast models will come into a bit better agreement as we get into tomorrow and of course the upcoming weekend because that will help us with our forecast confidence. But what we're thinking right now is that we'll really start to see an increase in cloud cover Tuesday. 20% chance of some showers toward the end of the day Tuesday. So yes, that would be getting close to midnight and then a chance of some scattered showers carrying over into the first day of 2020 on Wednesday. These days do look cooler 50s for high temperatures uh, as compared to the 70s. That's what we'll be dealing with for the next couple of days. So as we tweak your New Year's Eve forecast, be sure to keep checking the forecast with us on our newscast on the new KSAT weather app. Make sure you have that downloaded and updated and of course updates always on KSAT.com. Let's talk about the housing market for 2020. Yeah. That has been um, hot in San Antonio. So how are things looking for the next year? Great. I mean, as long as you're adding jobs, you're going to have a good market. 
<laughs> I yeah. mean, and San Antonio continues to do that. So you've got people, uh, you know, moving to the city. You have uh, increasing wages. So you know, you also have a segment of of the existing homeowners who you know, they want to move up. You know, it's time to. They're done with their starter home. They're going to go to that next level market. So there's some shift there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as long as uh, the the economy is ticking along, uh, you're going to have a pretty decent market. The question is, how tight is it going to get? I mean, there's housing construction underway, and you know, for the year we're looking, you know, at least through the end of October, uh, you had uh, year-to-date uh, home sales growth of about four percent, which exceeds you know what you saw at the state level. And you know, there's no reason to think, as long as the economy holds out, that that will not continue into next year. But again, I mean, you've got uh, you've got home builders building quickly, but is it going to be enough housing? You know, is it going to be you know, is it going to loosen up anytime soon so that if you're a buyer, uh, you don't have to act like in nanoseconds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's that's what a lot of buyers are finding now. I mean, it's like you've got to be you've got to be ready with a bid, get it in. You know, my I, my oldest daughter just bought a house. And uh, I mean, looking for a house just, you know, from her experience tells me it was like a full-time job for like three or four weeks. Wow. So yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I assume her, her experience wasn't too different from others in this market. Yeah. Okay. And you know, these, you know, we've been seeing housing prices, uh, you know, as the market tightens and as it gets a little more difficult for buyers to find what they're looking for. You know, that of course is driving up prices. So the median uh, home price is around, it's over uh, $230,000, which means on the other side, you know, you've got an affordable housing problem that's getting worse. Right, the question of are builders cranking them out fast enough right. exists all at the same time while the city t tries to grapple right. with the issue of affordable housing oh, yeah, exactly. in San Antonio. And, and the, the houses that developers are building, are they, you know, are they in uh, what's considered an affordable range? A lot of them are not. So we'll see how the city deals with that right, in 2020 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and how the housing market fares here locally. Absolutely. All right, Greg, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you. Let's take a look at what's trending. We got Ferris Abawi here with the good details. Well, Jaffney, welcome to the News at Nine. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to tell you what's going on on our website. All right, let's do it. All right, so, uh, you know, Christmas just happened yesterday. Uh, I'm sure you got a lot of gifts you liked. Uh, I got some great gifts that I liked yeah. as well. But it doesn't always work out that way, as, as you know. Sometimes the grandparents get you a gift that's uh, kind of a swing and a miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always work out that well. But um, on, our, on our website at ksot.com, uh, we mm. got a great story about uh, a bunch of retail stores that have actually extended their return deadlines, um, specifically knowing that uh, some people might have gotten some unwanted Wanted gifts. Well, that's um, actually a really good deal right there. Uh, but we actually uh, compiled a list of a bunch of stores, you know, including uh, some easy ones like Amazon, mm -hmm. AT&T, Apple, um, really a lot of uh, great stores that have, yeah, extended their policies, uh, extended their return deadlines, usually until about the end of January. Mm -hmm. um, and we both have when you can return it and also when the purchase had to be made in order to be eligible for this extended return. So, you know, if you don't like those socks that you got, yeah. it's not too late to go out and, and, <laughs> and return it. It's a, it's a big deal. Right. Though the socks are very warm around this time of year. So yeah, yeah. Might they might be good. <laughs> you know, we used to not like socks when we were kids, but as you get older, you kind of need them. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, well, uh, and of course, everyone uh, loves to take a vacation. It's never too late, even in the new year, never too late to mm. go out in town. And uh, actually, there was a Fredericksburg Airbnb that's making headlines um, right now uh, on our website at ksat.com as well. But this is a turn of the century train car yeah. that you can actually stay in in Fredericksburg. So it's an Airbnb train yeah. car. It's a, it's an Airbnb. Uh, yeah, it's a train car that they turned into a nice, cozy little place for you to stay out there that in the wine country. It's so legit right there. I would totally <laughs> like stay in one of those. It's awesome. And no, and get this, Jaffney, it was actually uh, President Theodore Roosevelt actually was one of the people who stayed in this train car in wow. 1894. Uh, it's only about $225 a night, which may be a little pricey, but also not so bad considering yeah. what you're getting. So we have all the details there on our website, a great little place. Uh, maybe not, not a bad getaway. Mm -mm.
Yeah, and uh, lastly, uh, in Oregon, a grandfather actually decided to buy a bus for his 10 grandkids this Christmas. That is so sweet. <laughs> yeah, this is a, an, a really incredible story. Uh, this grandfather in Oregon uh, decided to buy a short bus um, because he was thinking about what he wanted for Christmas and really his only answer was he wanted to spend more time with, with his 10 grandchildren. Aww. Now they go to a private school, yeah. they actually don't have a bus um, and so he took it upon himself to uh, buy a bus. He made sure it was outfitted with seat belts and everything and uh, he's gonna be their new bus driver uh, five days a week going that forward. so sweet. Like that, again, like you said, it builds that relationship with your, oh, can you yeah. just imagine ha seeing your grandchildren grow up year after year it's, after year all of them on the bus it must be so great and with the children you know they all live uh, two to three miles from each other you mm. said it's just going to be about a 20 minute trip so you get to spend that extra time with your cousins as well and and you know uh for for people who who you know love family and that's yeah. such an important aspect uh so sweet to see this and so sweet to see um you know want to spend um you know his his sort of uh uh, his his later years and you know what's what's great about this is uh, they named the bus already it's called the grandfather express oh yeah I love it <laughs> so the kids love it now they're excited they may be a little bit embarrassed later but that's okay <laughs> you know exactly it's all about making the memories mm, when they get older they'll realize and appreciate those oh. times that they had with granddaddy oh on the for bus. sure for sure <laughs> and that's right. it all right Ferris thank you so much we'll be right back This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Travis Kalanick, Uber's co-founder, has now cut all ties with the ride-hailing company, selling its remaining shares in the company and leaving the board of directors. For the past few weeks, Kalanick has been steadily ridding himself of those shares. And in other news, Boeing has disclosed some new, quote, very disturbing, end quote, messages between its employees during development of the 737 MAX jet. The plane maker reportedly had employees try to ensure production plans were not, quote, diverted by regulators or others, end quote. This all according to the government committee reviewing the messages. And the organizers of the Burning Man Festival have sued the Federal Bureau of Land Management to recover millions of dollars. They say they've been overcharged in fees. The organizers say the federal government has been systematically overcharging them for seven years of putting on the Desert Festival, all at about $3 million a year and without justification. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schiller from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange.